Okay, uh, for today's and one, I want to talk about how we assess first impressions. Um, and I want to talk about a basketball player named Kawhi Leonard. Um, I am a Spurs fan. I have been since I was a little kid. Went to my first NBA game at nine years old, watched the San Antonio Spurs play. It was amazing. Watched them win a bunch of championships. Their last championship, the finals MVP, was Kawhi Leonard, a, you know, like generational talent, unbelievable player. And he left San Antonio on very bad terms. And we were all super disappointed because we were losing like uh, a rock star, all-star finals, MVP, all defensive player of the year. Like we were just losing this gym and we were frustrated. We were mad at him because he was leaving and not just that he was leaving, but how he was leaving. And uh, he ended up just kind of sitting out most of the year. And I'm not going to pretend to know what was actually happening, but he was saying that he was hurt. And there was a lot of people not really knowing if he was hurt or not. Uh, he left and like immediately won a championship with Toronto, which was even more frustrating. You know, he just showed up and had like a, a playoffs, like very few players have ever had. It was absolutely incredible. Another finals MVP, another championship trophy. And then in a blockbuster deal, he went to the Los Angeles Clippers. And since he has been on the Clippers, he has sat out far more games than he's actually played. They're in the playoffs where in the first two games, he had 38 points and then 31 points. And he got injured again. And look, I I'm going to just believe the best and think that the injury really did happen. Right. Um, but, we were so frustrated to see Kawhi Leonard go. If we would have been paying attention, um, we might have actually been okay with his exit. And Maya Angelou said um, that when people show you who they are, you should believe them. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good thought. Uh, I think it needs to be expanded on just a little bit, though. Um, the problem with Kawhi is we could see the resume. Um, we could see the highlights. We could see the championship ring. And we could see the future. And I mean, the year that he got hurt, uh, I do believe we would have won the NBA championship that year again. We were playing against the Warriors. Someone did a real dirty move on him. He was never really the same with us after that. And uh, it's just hard to watch him walk away. And I think we get this way a lot in life. Uh, we get this way in our relationships where we see someone who's just so attractive. I mean, they're so good looking. They're like your type. You know, they're everything that you want. Um, and then you start seeing some red flags. You know, you date for a little while and you see some red flags. And you just you ignore those red flags. Because you see the resume or you see the attraction or maybe you see how much money they make or you see how popular they are. And it's like, there's no way I can give that up. It's like when people date celebrities, you know, they date celebrities and celebrities often are, you know, some of the strangest people and they get in there and they're super strange, but they're getting to like fly around in jets and stuff. So how could you give that up? And even with your friend group, you know, maybe you've had a friend since you were young and, you know, you reconnect as you're now adult and it's like, man, you have too much history there. And so you can't give that up. But you start seeing some some strange things or some habits that really aren't good for them and aren't really good for you to be around. And so how do we think about this? Because the inverse is also true. Um, most of us just are not good at assessing first impressions. Um, especially today, people really believe they can read each other. Um, I've never heard more people say, you know, I'm kind of an empath than I have in the last four years. Like everyone is an empath, whatever that means, right? We all really feel like we can, we can read people. And um, there's a psychological term for this. It's called the friends fallacy. It was an experiment where they got people together and um, they had them watch an episode of friends, uh, people who weren't familiar with the show. And they watched the episode with the volume off and then asked them to write a synopsis. And everyone could write a pretty good synopsis of what that episode was about. And it gives the idea that like, man, we can really read people. We know exactly what's going on. I didn't even have to hear their conversations. I knew exactly what was happening. It's called the friend's fallacy because the reason you can watch an episode of a sitcom with the volume off and say pretty specifically what it's about is because you're watching trained actors. When a trained actor is surprised, they make a surprised face. Like uh, if you're watching on the or just listening to the podcast, I basically did the Home Alone face, right? Um, however, in real life, when someone is surprised, sometimes they look mad. Sometimes they start crying when they're surprised. Sometimes they just go blank. Um, we don't actually know how to read people. And there's also been a psychological study that shows that the more confident you are in your ability to read people, it turns out the worse you are at it in actuality. And so that's something to think about if you're one of the people who always says I'm an empath or whatever, whatever that means. Um, regardless, uh, when someone shows you who they are, you should believe them. Um, I think that's true. And I actually think it's really good advice. However, 
I don't think what she is saying is you should try and psychoanalyze someone and read them and read their vibe and read them empathically the moment that you meet them or even the first couple of times that you meet them and then just cut them off and decide because you didn't like the way they said something or you didn't like the way they phrased that or you didn't like the emphasis they put on that one sentence or you didn't like the faces that they were making while you were talking because – all of us have experienced this where we had a really bad first impression of someone and they ended up being one of our closest friends once we got to know them because people are just kind of quirky and I'm, I'm very quirky. So, you know, I might have a really bad first impression with you and I promise I'm, I'm probably not trying to be a bad guy. And if you got to know me, then, you know, you may not love me, but you'll at least probably like me. Um, so I don't think this is saying just cut people off and be kind of this like conceited snooty person. Um, I do think, though, that we fall to the other extreme as well. One extreme is we, we make a first impression based on our perceived ability to read people, and we cut people off who we shouldn't. The other is we ignore red flags with someone that we do like or we are getting to know um, because we are just so caught up on the outward appearance or the things that we can see. And there's a great story about this in the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures, when Israel is going to pick its king. And Saul was the first king of Israel, and he was chosen, Scripture tells us, because he was head and shoulders taller than everyone else in the kingdom. And, you know, this this bias still exists today. And as someone who's 5'11 and three quarters and always wanted to be six foot, I'm a little bit salty about it because if you look at, like, the height of Fortune 500 CEOs, it's, like, shocking how much taller it is than the average male height in the United States. Um, like CEOs, this was several years ago, it could have changed, but like average male CEOs average like 6'3 or 6'4, which is so much taller than the average male, right? And so we see tall and we think leader, and that goes all the way back. This is thousands of years ago. And Saul got put up there because he was big and tall and he looked just like regal, you know? And it was time to find a new king. And so the prophet had gone out and he was led by the Lord to this family of Jesse and Jesse had all of these sons to choose from. And one by one, the different sons came starting with the biggest and strongest and oldest, most mature, you know, he could actually grow like this great thick beard and he had big muscles and veiny forearms. And, you know, just was this like massive, just great looking guy. And, and kind of like Saul, you know, probably head and shoulders taller than most of the people. And, and God's like, it's not him. And he just goes one by one through the brothers until finally there's one brother left and the dad didn't even call him in because he's the runt. He's way younger than everybody. It was like, there was just no chance. And when we look at this story unfolding, we see God say this incredible thing. The Lord said to Samuel, the prophet, do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. Do not look at his appearance or his stature. Remember, that's the entire way they picked their first king. And by the way, their first king kind of went crazy. It wasn't a great king. And now David comes in from the field, tending the sheep, the forgotten one completely left out, and God calls him the smallest, the youngest. And we can look at someone on our favorite sports team who is just an absolute freak athlete, and yet they have all these off-the-field problems and all these red flags, or they just continue to be injury-prone, and they, they always sit out, and it doesn't really feel like they know how to exactly play through pain or prioritize the team. They're selfish. They're, it's all these red flags, but my gosh, they can run so fast and jump so high and shoot the ball so well, and, and it's like we just can't lose them. And to be fair, I mean, the Spurs have not been good in a while, you know, like it hurt losing Kawhi. Um, but we look at where he's at right now and the frustration with his current team and all of the rumors swirling around him and all the drama swirling around him. And he told us who we were, or, or <laughs> he told us who he was, and we were really slow to believe him. And what we should really seek to do is try to see people the way that God sees them, which means on the one hand, we don't just form these first impressions and then out of a gut instinct that's probably wrong, distance ourselves from them and not give them a shot. Instead, we actually get to know them and we try to get to know their heart. There's a reason that statistically people who date for at least two years, a minimum of two years, have an almost 40% uh, less likely chance of getting divorced. You date for at least two years and your odds of divorce go down by almost 40%. Why is that? Because in two years, you are forced to look past the outward appearance. You're forced to look past the attraction. 
you're forced to look past the common habits or common, uh, you know, uh, commonalities that you have. You're forced to see their heart. And within two years, people can pretend if a man really finds a woman attraction, uh, attractive, he can pretend. He can pretend for six months, maybe 12 months. If he's really good, maybe 18 months. He can't pretend for two years. At some point, you are going to see the heart. You are going to see the warning signs. And when you see them, you should take them seriously. When someone shows us who they really are, not based on a first impression and not based on their outward appearance, but who they really are on the inside, we should believe them. And if you are a believer in Jesus, then the call isn't to separate yourself and hate them and damn them. And you, your call is to love them, but not unwisely. Um, your call isn't to be best friends if there's someone who's going to lead you down the wrong path. Your call isn't to hire them just because you've been friends forever. And your call certainly isn't to marry them, even though you see really significant red flags. Someone shows you who they are really on the inside when you see them kind of like God sees us. Um, you should believe them.